Hello fellow do-it-yourselfers, Terry Peterman, the internet electrician here, coming to you from Costa Rica, beautiful Playa Junquiel or Paraiso area near to Playa Blanca on the Guanacaste coast. So I'm going to tell you a little story here. I'm not going to be able to give you a whole bunch of electrical details other than what I'm going to do and what we're in the process of doing and how we manage to get that done and I'll wrap it up with showing you the final product. But what happened here is uh, my friend's place here, they're neighbors from Colorado, they've become very good friends and they had an electrical problem here back in, I think it was May or June of this year. And the result was going to be to replace their entire run of feeder cables, which were three aught copper and a 200 amp service. But the crazy part is it runs about 350 feet or more. I haven't exactly measured it out, but the solution was going to be to tear up, run new conduit, and replace all that huge copper cable for a cost of like 14 to 18 thousand dollars. So I just told them. Can you hold on, wait till I get down there and we'll have a look at it and see if there might be a better solution to this. So sure enough, we did get here and what we found is that, well, what they found in June or whenever this broke down is that they found a melted out chunk of copper in the feeders about oh, probably 80 feet from the house in a ditch. Now for copper to do this, it has to have a nick in the insulation and it sits there in water if the conduit isn't watertight, which it isn't. And if there's a nick in the wire, which there must have been, it'll sit there and cook and corrode and eventually one day it melts down. So right here is where the, the feeder wires come into the house and it goes underneath the piping for the pool, which is a little bizarre in itself, into an open ditch and then it goes under the slab and into the main panel here. From there it feeds a secondary panel in the upstairs of the house and it also feeds all the way back to the casita home here where the gardener and caretakers live. So what they did is they got the power company in here in June and they jerked on these cables from this end. You can see the cable sitting here all coiled up, what's left of them. They pulled from this end and they found out it pulled right out of the conduit and it was all green and burnt and melted. So what Randy, our caretaker and gardener, we all share here, what he did is he got somebody in and they cut, dug out the problem spot, found the conduit all crumbled and, and toasted as they call it, and the cable melted off. So what they did is cut them, pulled them back to Randy's casita, the casita here, and then they spliced them in temporary, back feeding the cables that come from the house here down to the casita so that they had some kind of power and that's where we actually sit right now. This is with a temporary splice made. So when I got here, we started to dig. And so we had the guys digging this ditch. And as we found out, we could not get to a good piece of cable very easily. So we decided that we're, or I decided that we're gonna bring those three aught cables up by the edge of the property, put in another panel then feed the casita and then feed the house with 125 amps. So we're gonna have a 200 amp panel down there, an indoor panel in an outdoor enclosure. It's all made uh, weatherproof and watertight. And we're gonna, like I said, bring that two inch pipe up into it, three aught copper cables, way too long of a secondary run, but that's just the way it was done here about 15 years ago. And uh, there is a potential that the high voltage will come up right beside the property here, at which point we will just refeed from a, a new transformer and cut the length of those secondaries down, way down. Anyhow, so here's where we were at. We opened up the ditch, dug that all out and exposed the lines and found that the two inch was in very bad shape. So there was no saving it for this last 80 feet probably. There was no, no saving it. We can salvage the wire for, for salvage or another project perhaps, but it wasn't worth using for the job anymore when we came up with this other solution to, to uh, feeding everything here. So I'll just show you the ditch here to where the conduit was melted down. The original problem was right here. 
And as you can see, we've got one conductor left because we left the neutral, or they left the neutral, so they had a neutral at the house. But they pulled out the two hot conductors. In this ditch, we had some spare three quarter inch conduits. The one you see, the gray one up top, is a thin wall PVC sanitario, we call it here. That's inch and a quarter. That's what fed from the house back down to the casita, but now we're gonna turn that around and feed the power from the casita up to the house and from the new panel to the casita. So we'll be reusing that inch and a quarter, but we're abandoning the two inch at this point here. All right, so the rest of the story. So that's when we decided to quit digging here, when we decided we're gonna use the inch and a quarter to go up to the house. So. It's still buried underground here. And this is what we have going down at the casita. Okay, so here we are at the casita. I'm gonna show you the ditch from this angle. Then I'll give you some close-ups of what's going on here. And that's where the new panel is gonna be in the background there. So here coming out of the ground are the original two hot conductors, the three hot copper, that they just pulled out of the two inch conduit. They're good to this point all the way down to the transformer. Thank goodness there is a little bit of peeling on the outside layer of the insulation, but we're hoping and praying that that's gonna be okay. Otherwise this job is gonna turn into closer to the $14,000 and, and we're hoping for about three or four. So here's where it went into the casita. Now this was a little repair that we, I did for them one night in the rain in the dark when the power broke down at one other time. So we made a little temporary junction box here with a lid, but since then the lid is gone. Anyway, we'll fix this all up properly when we do this job now. So there's the, the three aughts tied on to the number sixes going into the casita, as well as the number sixes going back to the house to back feed on the 60 amp breaker back feed the house for temporary power right now. So here's what we're gonna do. This is where the panel is going to go. It's gonna sit on those two pedestals. We've got the two inch in the center. It's gonna be coming from the road up into a panel, 200 amp panel. We're gonna have a 60 amp feed to the casita and 125 amp feed on number two copper cables going back up to the house. So this two inch conduit took a deep dive way down into the bottom of the ditch here. And up here it's about three feet deep, down here it's five or six. So that was a challenge and that's gonna be a challenge to cut the two inch conduit and bring the wires up into the new panel. So that's gonna be the challenge. We've gotta set the new panel box up on top of these little pedestals. Right now I've got them just supported temporary with cinder block and spiked down with rebar. And this is the new panel house that we're going to be putting on top of these stands. And like I say, when we're all done, we're gonna give you a good once over of the project when it's finished, but that's the plan. And here is what we've been dealing with too. As soon as we dug this ditch and as soon as we exposed everything, the rain started. We thought we were at the end of the rainy season, but no. The rainy season started again with a vengeance and it pretty much rained every day for like two weeks solid. So we had a muddy, sloppy mess here. We didn't want to do anything or as little as possible in the rain because it just takes twice as long. This stuff is gumbo. So once you get a shovel full of it, you can't even get it off the shovel. So it's Sunday now. The Rain has stopped. Seems like we're into the dry season, hopefully. Didn't rain yesterday, didn't rain today so far. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna continue mucking out this ditch, splitting open that two inch and trying to reroute it into the panel and hopefully get the job done within the next day or two. So again, here's the inch and a quarters. One of them now is gonna go from the new panel, 90 degree in to the casita. And the other one is gonna go and tie into the existing inch and a quarter and feed the house. All right, just to put a wrap on this project, here's the meter and the disconnect switch 
that uh, feeds all the way up to our new panel way up the hill I'm just going to show you just how far that is and then we'll head on up there and show you the finished product so all the way up this road and as far as you can see on top of that hill to the right is where the panel is so let's go on up there and show you the rest of the project all finished up All right, here's Randy's casa on the left. There's mi perros. Amigos, venga, venga. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Lobo. It's just me. This is the casa of our amigos here, also from Canada, Colin and Bev Williams. They live right above our property. This is our friends from Colorado, Steve and Lynn. That's the one we were working on. San Jacinto. Beautiful property up here. And it's their house that we had to refeed the power to. As I explained in the previous segment, Here's their pool. Had some work done to it. She's back up and running. Had to do some patching of the tiles. So here is the caja. I see somebody opened it up. A registro, I guess, is a better description. There's our new cables coming up. Left an expansion loop in them so that we can maybe put a proper box on here. But this is supposed to be covered up, so water can't get in there so I'll have to find out who opened that up and didn't close it once the rainy season starts it starts in earnest here so this is the trench line I dropped a spare conduit in the ditch here if you can see it and brought it up here just so that if we ever need another conduit we don't have to replace this whole section from where the break was up to that point. This is down to Randy and Maria's casita. Here's the other end of that conduit. Going up the hill to there. So just a little uh, pre-planning in case there's a future problem. Now last we showed you this, the ditches were all open end of the rainy season. Come here, Bobby. Come and say hi. Come and say hi to the YouTube people. This is Licky Bobby. He's a really good dog. So is his brother Lobo. So here we are, the casita, all been backfilled. So the conduit goes directly into their panel now. Everything's properly grounded as it should be. Here's the new panel stand. And inside are the new breakers. Got to finish labeling this so we got the 125 amp feed going up the hill to Casa San Jacinto and the 60 amp sub feed over to the Casita con Randy y Maria and their two sons Joshua and Axel. So yeah I do have to label those although with only two breakers, two double pole breakers in there it's pretty obvious as to what they service. So all in all, the job worked out pretty good. Saved them a lot of money, I think, in replacing that cable all the way down the hill, because here's a chicken for you. <laughs> so yeah, the conduit comes out here, across that road, and then all the way down the hill I just came from, so quite a few meters of cable. So I'm just gonna go back up the hill here and close that cover over those wires and I'm, I'll be coming up with some duck seal and seal that conduit up so that if someone leaves that lid off again we won't get water ingressing into the conduit again and have to start this all over 
So ideally we would have put a new registro here, but as you can see, the pipes go under the slab, into the panel that's in, inside the uh, storage warehouse here, they call it, where their pool equipment is, hot water heater, etc. Condo goes under the slab and the cable was, cables were good from here to the panel. So I wasn't gonna bother replacing the cables all the way to there. And the conduit was not consistent, was not connected directly anyway, that it came up in here already and then went under the slab. So ideally another registro would have been put in here, which is just like a junction box. They use those a lot here, ground level connection boxes. But this is gonna be just fine. We're gonna seal that up. This is basically a junction box because it's supposed to be closed so water can't get into that pipe. You always got to be careful for snakes, scorpions, all kinds of stuff when you close this up. But there you go. Lid's closed. Let's call it a wrap. Thanks for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Hope that it gave this uh, video a like and become one of my subscribers. It so much helps the channel. I know you get tired of hearing that from creators, but it's so true. So again, we'll see you in the next one. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician.